Hello my crafty friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm coming today uh, to share with you process video of how I made a simple writing journal using newspapers, envelopes and some additional papers I'm, I found in my stuff. Uh, I'm gonna be using classical book binding method. 10 signatures, each signature will have five folded papers. Uh, those folded papers I'm gonna be using these two envelopes and also papers from newspapers. Pages I will make from newspapers. For the cover, I'm gonna be using this gray board or chipboard uh, from this notepad. And I will cut the pieces from this gray board. First, what I will do is preparing my book block. Book block I'm gonna make from 10 signatures. Each signature will have five folded papers. One of these papers will be from newspapers. Then two of these papers or pages will be made from envelopes. And another additional two will be made using these papers. So I'm going to prepare 20 envelopes. 10 of these US letter size. This is that never ending paper. Really beautiful paper. And I will have also these additional uh, ripping of page papers, these sides, and 10 of these papers. I'm gonna tea dye them and prepare them to do a vintage look. So I do have prepared my papers. These are those uh, side edges uh, from those US letter, uh, letter size papers. I do have tea dyed all my envelopes, the chipboard or gray board piece and I do have uh, separated these beautiful crosswords and puzzles and stuff from my newspapers. I would like to use it somehow. Not sure how that will go because they are in the large size. I will see what I can do. So first I'm gonna alter my uh, envelopes to the journal pages which means I need to open them. For opening my envelopes, I'm gonna be using this knife. And every single envelope I'm gonna open on this side and on the bottom. This one I'm gonna keep together with the envelope. Or maybe I will go this way. Because here the envelope is glued together. This one is just folded. So I'm gonna think uh, I'm gonna do every single envelope from that opposite side where it's glued together. The folded side uh, side I'm gonna keep together. So just with the knife and like with a uh, letter opener, just slide it down easily. And open like a book. I do have my envelopes open, every single one of them. Uh, I'm gonna fold all my papers on half. And I'm gonna also fold my newspapers pieces on half. All of them. I do have everything folded on half. Um, from my envelopes, I will need to cut uh, cut off the flap, original flap of that envelope, and probably to make it stay this part. And I also need to cut down a little bit my newspapers because they are quite long, as you can see. So first, I'm gonna cut the, the envelopes. Here, from these papers, I can choose this. It's tallest paper and that's the US size and this one it's uh, A4 size which is which does have a bigger width here so I'm gonna combine these two I'm gonna have a look envelope it's wider than my papers so I can cut sides of the envelope and it's also taller so I can cut somewhere here my envelope and the envelope will be my measurement 
for my newspapers. The cut newspapers a little bit down. So match all these papers as close together as it's possible. So first I'm gonna cut off my envelopes about one and three quarter of inch each of them. For cutting the flap of my envelopes off, I'm going to be using my guillotine. I'm going to slide this straight edge of that flap on one and three quarter of inch. Match it all together, hold it here. And just cut this, will gives me the how tall my journal will be. Yeah, this is that A4 size. So five and three quarter from the fold. So fold of my envelope I'm gonna place on five and three quarter and cut here. That will give me the width of my pages from envelopes. So I do have everything cut in the kind of similar size and now I'm gonna take always one of these papers. Envelope, then another paper, maybe this one, again envelope, which way, this way, now I can place it maybe this way, and in the middle I will always have the newspapers to make sure when I will open it I will see some of these puzzles. Uh, as a newspaper paper, it's very fragile and <clears throat> it can be ripped off easily. I'm going to flip it this way and the fold itself, I'm going to reinforce. For reinforcing, I'm going to be using this medical paper, medical tape. It's soft, but it's very strong. And I believe it will hold my newspapers. For a longer time. So always the fold itself I'm gonna reinforce with this medical tape and then place it in the middle of my signature like this. I do have prepared my 10 signatures with folded papers, newspapers and envelopes and because it's kind of like, you know, too fluffy. I'm gonna put some weight on it. And I'm gonna let it sit till tomorrow to make this paper as much flat as they can be to make my book binding easy. Before my signatures will get flat down beautifully, uh, I'm gonna make for myself piercing cradle. It's great tool, great uh, base for anyone who would like to make more than one journal. If you're gonna make just one journal, you don't need it. You will be good enough with some owl or some needle to poke the holes through to that fold in your signature. But if you wanna make more journals than one, the piercing cradle, it's a wonderful tool and it will help you so much to make your work much more easy. I do have here a three size uh, MDF board, which I'm going to be using. You can use uh, some old uh, book cover if you do have some large book, maybe like Atlas book. They do have large uh, book covers and they will be perfect for, you know, uh, if you want to make journal in the size A4. This is long enough to make my piercing cradle. So I'm going to be using this one. Uh, any book cover which is really large, that will help as well because they are made from nice, strong chipboard and you can use that. For cutting my MDF board, I'm going to be using my jigsaw. I'm not going to film that because I'm going to move outside with this. Do not make mess in my home. Uh, as I said, this is A3 size, so I'm going to cut it on three long pieces. Two will be similar. This has... 29.8 centimeters so two pieces I'm gonna create a uh, with this leg 11 centimeters with width 
and that rest I'm gonna cut on half like this uh, now I'm gonna make a marks uh, this is a four size of chipboard from that uh, paper pad I showed you at the start I'm gonna place it here kind of in the middle and I'm gonna make a mark on the sides of my chipboard now next what I have to think I'm gonna cut kind of like slots in both of these pieces uh, I have to think about thickness of this material so I'm gonna place it there and make a mark on that next side here and here so I know thickness of my material it's half a uh, centimeter yeah half centimeter so I'm gonna be cutting slots I think in the leg of seven centimeters from the edge seven centimeters from the edge and that This is five five millimeters. So I did draw around. So if I will cut uh, next to it, I should fit with these boards inside to slide it here. I'm gonna cut same slots on both sides in both both of these pieces. So I do have my notches cut it off. I'm gonna just clear it here. And I cut it off big enough so I can slide there those small parts. I'm going to be using this sport tape and just tape it right here. The sport tape is self-adhesive fabric tape. And it's perfect for a project like this. It, it holds nicely and it's strong enough. Now I'm going to take these two boards. slide them to the side and now I need to decide how much open I want to have my piercing cradle so it's totally up to me I think I'm gonna go for kind of I think 90 degrees here I'm gonna have a look I can fit in there A4 size papers very easily to make sure that these uh, sides I will glue kind of at the same position with this same leg so first I'm gonna open this in the size I want and I'm gonna make mark here and here I'm gonna take it off and repeat these marks on that opposite you know on that second piece I'm gonna take my sanding block and sand all the edges to make sure that there are no leftovers, no any scratches, no rough edges. So I have sanded the edges on all my pieces. I also sand a little bit these entries here to make them kind of even. Where are I? Here, this way. Where are my marks? This way. So I'm gonna take first part, I'm gonna put the glue right behind the mark and place there 
my NDF board and move this one on that other mark. And I'm gonna keep that board in the same uh, same direction. I'm close to this edge of my hole there. Now I'm gonna put the glue on that opposite side and place the, there that MDF board. Let it dry. Now I can try to flip it over and I'm gonna go right here with the glue. Kind of spread the glue around and in this fold. Like this. Same I'm gonna do on that opposite side. So first to take board in the right direction. So place one there, one here. I'm gonna put glue here and place there my MDF board. And put the glue on that other side as well. Right next to that point I made and place there my MBF board. Flip it over and again I'm gonna be using hot glue and just like with welding spread the glue on the sides. That should hold well. And it's standing nicely. I can put also glue on these sides just to secure it. I can put a glue here in these ends just to secure it and all this I can cover with some decorative paper make it even beautiful for me like my beautiful amazing tool. I'm gonna do it one day not today. <laughs> I'm gonna move to my signatures and have a look how flat they are. And I'm here with my nice and strong piercing cradle. I'm here back with my signatures. They are now much more easily to manage, sitting nicely. I also prepared my uh, template for poking tools, uh, <laughs> poking holes through to my signatures. So now I can manage to put papers on the one side of my cradle open them in the middle here I'm gonna have a look how far I'm gonna go with the newspapers I think this way and I'm gonna poke the holes where there are these marks and with this cradle it's very easy to go through you always have a poked hole straight down through to your papers you will don't end up somewhere on the side of the fold on your paper and because i use that uh, fabric tape i hope it will hold much more longer <laughs> so with the same poking uh, with same template i'm gonna poke the holes in all my signatures always i can also manage the position, position of the newspapers to make sure that they are holding at least with three holes. So right here it's perfect position. My signatures are poked with those holes and I can move to sewing. Uh, I'm gonna keep one here. I do have uh, underneath large book just to rise up a little bit my work to have here better space for my sewing. 
For sewing, you can use the wax thread, but this one it's kind of thick. Uh, I'm gonna be using this one. It's linen thread. Uh, I receive it with my leatherwork uh, tools and it's really nice and strong and it's thin. I'm gonna pull nice amount of the thread from the spool. And I'm gonna prepare my thread to go uh, easily through to the holes. You can use beeswax, but if you don't have beeswax, you can use any kind of paraffin to help your thread to be more uh, smooth to go through the holes. So I'm just gonna move my thread through to this uh, fragrance wax. First, it will make the thread more smooth. And because it's fragrance wax, it will smell nicely. <clears throat> you can secure the thread here on the needle by making very easy, kind of spreading the thread. I'm gonna move my book just for a sec. Uh, with the needle, make the thread flat and try go kind of in the middle of the thread and pull it around your needle slide it down and now just tight it will secure your thread around the needle so you will don't lose the thread from the needle it's very easy it doesn't make big bulk big knot here around the on the edge of your needle so it goes nicely through the holes in your books in your signatures <clears throat> for binding i'm gonna be use this piece bias bias <laughs> oh, i can't say it i think it's bias binding tape it's nice strong it doesn't stretch and it's perfect for book binding nice amount of that tape i need two of them uh, as you can see i made the holes kind of like around this tape so first i'm gonna place one tape secure it with uh, this paper medical tape make sure it will don't move I'm gonna take another tape put the medical tape on the end now move my signature here hold it here and place the tape underneath where there are holes so now I am ready to go through to my holes and start to sew my book I'm starting from outside here I'm gonna keep kind of a large piece of thread to make sure I do have there something So make it nice and tight and I'm going to move to next signature and start to sew with the same sewing to the other end. And again I'm going to sew around the tape. Very good. Here again around the tape. And outside. Pull it nicely, but not too much. Do not tear your paper. Just put those two signatures here, close together, nice and tight. Grab the end and make a knot here. And you can cut the end. Make sure you are cutting the right end. Do not cut the thread you are having in your needle. And bring another signature. 
and continue with same steps on that opposite side. And again, make it tight. And here on the end, you're gonna do kettle stitch. It's very easy. Go with the needle between previous two signatures. Here, go outside. So here you are making kind of like loop. So I'll go into that loop. And tight. With this simple cut stitch, you're gonna do on each of these <clears throat> ends in that row till the end of your thread or till the end of your signatures. Depends what will end up first. I think thread will be first. And I'm gonna show you how you can extend it easily. So now I'm gonna take another signature. I will go to the end and show you one more time on that opposite end between previous two signatures which means between this one and this one. I'm gonna zoom it a little bit. So between this signature and this signature go with your needle. Let it go out. You're making loop here, so go into that loop and tie. And you are ready to go for next signature. I am now on the end of my thread, so I need to extend my uh, thread. I'm gonna be using weaving, uh, weaving knot. I learned that when I've been weaver back in Czech Republic, when I've been working in Utah company and we use that a lot. So you're going to make a loop. Cross the thread like this. Now you're going to go with another kind of like loop through to this and easily tie it. Not too much because now you need to take this loop, this big one, hold it here, you need to take this loop around your needle, go as far as you can to the book, to the signature, and easily, easily tie it around your thread here. and tied it properly. That way you extended your thread. Cut these two ends. Unthread your needle. And again, secure your needle, uh, your thread in your needle. Put your thread into your needle. This end, flat it down with the top of your needle and kind of try to go in the middle of that thread like this and slide it down around the loop here and just tight. Do not rush and just tie and it's holding really nicely. And then you can just, oops, then you can just continue with your work. So I'm now on the end of my last signature and I'm going to do again kettle stitch. Just go between those previous two signatures. Go to the loop. And kind of continue with the same looping around the thread before and before just gonna grab it this way so you're just going around those previous threads oops yeah be careful <laughs> do not 
make a note yearly then you have to so I do have my book box on now I can take off this medical tape so as my textbook text yeah book block textbook is all sewn up I'm gonna uh, prepare end papers it's front paper when you open the cover there is always front paper and there is always the back paper they are called end papers so I'm gonna prepare them uh, I'm gonna be using this uh, designers paper pad I think it's 160 170 GSM I'm not sure because I I lost somewhere the cover but they are nice strong but not too heavy they are really beautiful gramage of the papers and I'm thinking either these kind of like wood or these uh, musical sheets but I think I would like to have that, that wood uh, I need kind of like double size of my book block to create one paper so my book block I'm gonna be using this ruler which has middle uh, zero in the middle it's called quilting ruler and it's perfect for measuring what I need so my book block text block is 14 and a half I would say so 14 and a half yes this is big enough I can make one paper from this totally so I'm gonna rip two of these papers so both of these sheets I'm gonna cut in the high of how many 21 centimeters by uh, 14 and a half 29 centimeters then I will fold them half so 21 by 29 I'm gonna fold them half so now I'm gonna prepare my end papers for gluing on my textbook uh, I'm gonna be glue kind of like with the strip of about three millimeters of glue I'm gonna glue them to the end I'm not gonna glue them all the way on that page so I'm gonna prepare my papers here and one paper on the top to protect the rest of the paper I'm gonna be using my homemade glue it's wheat glue mixed half half with PVA glue it's perfect for book binding and I'm just gonna apply the glue on these ends one here to the front I'm gonna match the spine side and place it there and I'm gonna flip it over take the second paper match the side where the spine will be or is <laughs> and press it all together and put some weight on it and let it dry so I believe it's glued all together and now I'm gonna apply the glue to the spine I'm gonna stretch this one put my textbook between these two boards I'm gonna bring back my book again to rise it up a little bit I think I paused my video <laughs> where I supposed to get the video play uh, before I started to apply the glue I took my bone folder and all holes I kind of pushed back to close those holes uh, where I made them before with that oval everything around the thread I closed the holes just to protect the papers inside and now I am applying the glue on the spine I'm using my homemade mix PVA glue with wheat with wheat glue homemade wheat glue and just cover the spine and let it dry 
for attaching a text block uh, to your covers, it's good to have that piece of mall over the spine. If you don't have any, you can prepare it. Uh, you can use some very light fabric and prepare it the way where it will work as a mall. I do have here 90 grades of cheesecloth. I'm gonna cut it into some size. This is A4 size paper, so I know if I will cut this piece, it will be big enough for my spine. I do have uh, the paper which I have on my table. It's non-sticky paper. It's from labels. And this side is that non-sticky side. You can use any backing paper from those self-adhesive wallpapers or f uh, cling film, you know, to protect the background from the glue. We're gonna place the cheesecloth on that non-sticky paper. And I'm gonna be using my mix of wheat glue with PVA, but you can use just PVA glue. PVA glue is good enough to create your mold. And just apply thin coat through to your fabric and then let it dry. It doesn't have to be coated heavily, just thin coat. Spread it with your brush and now let it dry. So once you do have your uh, fabric or a cheesecloth outside, it's time to prepare cover. Uh, it's time to prepare book cloth for our book. Uh, I do have here this A3 size of uh, notepad. Which I'm gonna use as my background or, you know, working spot. I'm gonna use this film cling, cling film, not film cling, cling film. And I'm gonna wrap my notepad into this cling film just to protect it. And on that I'm gonna be creating my book cloth. So first I'm gonna cut a piece of cheesecloth which will cover my book. I'm going to place it on my notepad. I've got here all kind of cutouts from newspapers and that's what I'm going to be using to create my cheesecloth or not cheesecloth, my book cloth. Spread the nice amount of glue on my cheesecloth and then add on it my newspaper cutouts. I am placing the text uh, kind of that way because uh, the paper will be inside when I will be gluing this on my book cover. This paper will be inside. So outside will be actually fabric. So once you do have cover all that spot you choose all that space you just need to let it dry properly so my text block it's dry the spine is nice and dry and i'm just trimming the edges here and here i'm taking the end papers as my measurement as you can see those tea dyed papers they are here and there a little bit over the edge so what i'm just doing i'm just placing the ruler on the edge of that white paper, on of that end paper, and everything what is over this edge, I'm cutting down with my craft knife. Just piece by piece. Till I will be on the bottom. I do have uh, all dry, so my cheesecloth for the spine, this book cloth for the cover. Look at that beautiful newspaper print. 
visible through to that cheesecloth. I also cut it uh, two chipboard pieces for the front cover, for the back cover and one for the spine. I did measure that the spine of my book, oops, the spine of my book is two centimeters. So that's what I do have here, two centimeters spine. And I cut it in the leg, uh, well, yeah, in the leg of, of the cover. Before uh, I will glue the cover on my book block or, or before I will even work with cover, I'm gonna add this cheesecloth over the spine and I'm also gonna be using this ribbon and I will create bookmark using this ribbon. I don't have that proper bookmaker uh, kind of like press, so uh, I decided to use <laughs> this one instead. <laughs> this is Zutter machine and I found that it can be used kind of ish as a holder <laughs> for my book block. I do have here pieces of chipboard from an old book. I'm using it here and there to help me, you know, to work with book covers and work with journals. Especially when I need to make some gluing and covering. So I'm going to put my textbook or text block between those uh, heavy chipboards like this. They are slightly shorter than my uh, text block. So I'm going to place it here and just tie it with this. It will hold for some time. First, I'm gonna take this ribbon and I'm gonna take about two legs of my book. And I'm gonna be using my glue. We add the glue here in the middle and I'm gonna place there that ribbon and kinda press it to that glue. I'm going to put the glue over it as well. Now I totally forgot to cut my cheesecloth for the spine. I'm going to move this. Take one of the book covers, place it on my cheesecloth and just cut the piece which is about the same size. And a little bit more doesn't have to be longer it should be slightly shorter than it's the spine yeah yeah it's gonna be good now i'm gonna apply the glue over the spine take my cheesecloth and place that cheesecloth on the spine and press 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 I'm gonna move it aside. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the top. I'm gonna move it on the side. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take this book page and from that book page, I'm gonna cut the piece uh, two centimeters by 21 centimeters which is size of the spine so i can just take this one get up my scissors and cut the strip of this book page in the same size as is the spine of my text block i'm gonna bring back my text block and place this on the top. Yeah. 
Yes. That's the piece I need. So I'm going to apply the glue and place my strip of book page over it and press it. Like this. Now I need to let it dry. So I believe I can now move to creating the book cover and to put it all together. And I'm gonna just tuck in <coughs> my bookmark some neat way. I'm gonna slide it in, lay it flat, and just slide it inside make a nice fold and here I'm gonna open it somewhere next to it and just place it flat in there so uh, I also used iron and I did iron it uh, iron uh, my book cloth and I do have here my pieces I do have two pieces Front cover, back cover, I do have spine. Spine I do have in the size, in the actual size of my spine. Book covers, <coughs> I do have half centimeter shorter here on this side. Half centimeter, they are in the exact size, uh, how tall they are, but uh, they don't have same width. They are half centimeters shorter than is my text book text block like this so first I'm gonna take piece of paper and place the piece of paper around the spine kind of Place the spine to that paper. <clears throat> Place my chipboards around the book and nicely place it down and make a mark. On the paper. This is my marking. Now I do have here a piece of old book page which I have cut it to this uh, leg of my uh, spine size. So first I'm gonna put the spine kind of in the middle. I'm gonna draw here this just in case and I'm gonna also Fold it over the edge and fold it over the edge. I'm gonna take spine off, I'm gonna fold it opposite way and I'm gonna take this my template, place the spine, those folds over these folds and make my marks here. and draw their lines that will navigate me later where I should put a glue how far I should go with the glue here and here can move this one I'm gonna flip it over where I'm planning to place the spine I'm gonna take my amazing sanding tool and I'm gonna sand edges of the spine reinforcer to make them kind of like um, 
more flat or in angle here and on the opposite side as well if you have chisel you can just slide it down with chisel I don't have chisel so I'm gonna brush it or sand it that sanded edge will be here <clears throat> not down there but here this side will be straight and flat I'm gonna put there a glue and place my spine piece in the middle of my paper now I can flip it over I'm gonna make it flat do not have there any kind of bubbles make it flat and now I can glue <coughs> the chipboard pieces with one mark <coughs> I'm gonna flip it this way put the ruler on the side just to make sure I will have nice and straight uh, cover oh first I'm gonna apply the glue I'm gonna place my ruler on the side take another chipboard and place it again to that mark I made like this I do have here my non-sticky papers, I'm gonna place them in they are from the labels place my book block inside fold the covers around and place it between uh, my uh, my plate here and I'm gonna put some weight on it and let it all dry so my bookcase or <laughs> base for my book cover it's dry and I can cut the piece of my book cloth I'm gonna cut about one inch gap around the cover I do have my book cloth cut it to the size I need to cover all these chipboards I'm gonna take a pencil to make sure I will place my chipboards back to the same position I'm gonna draw the template now I'm gonna Cut the corners with the gap from drawn corner, corner about three millimeters gap. I'm gonna apply the glue to my wolf cloth. Take my chipboards and place them back to the position I draw I'm gonna flip it over and kind of I'm gonna take my bone folder and with my bone folder I'm gonna go uh, between the chipboards and the spine piece and nicely press it in there So it get glued to that paper here. Now I can apply the glue on these top ones. And 
and with bone folder I'm gonna fold the book cloth around the edge and here press it around the chipboard and also press it here around the spine chipboard I'm gonna do that opposite side. So I do have glued these long sides. I'm gonna flip it over. You do have here these uh, wooden sticks. I'm gonna place them between spine and uh, covers. I'm gonna put there this and put some weight on it like this and I'm gonna let it sit about two hours I think that it was there long enough I'm gonna take off these and I can show you oops oh yeah good how beautifully embossed it, it is. So now I can finish these. I'm gonna take my bone folder. First I'm gonna fold with bone folder these corners to help them a little bit to go around the chipboard. And same on that opposite side. Now I'm going to apply the glue to that dress. My bone folder and again I'm gonna be lifting the paper nicely folding around the edge of the chipboard and going here And create nice and flat corners here and here. Same I'm gonna do on that opposite side. And I'm gonna let dry these sides. And I think it's time to glue it all together. I'm gonna cut this uh, slightly down about the size about one and one quarter of inch. I would say and same with the tape same on that opposite side I'm gonna also cut the cheesecloth to the angle just to make sure there will be no bulks in the ends and it will not be not peeking out from my book cover. Which way we are going? Yeah, this way. And this one, this way as well. So now it's time to glue it all together. <coughs> yeah. So first... I'm gonna glue the tapes. And I'm using my homemade mix PVA with wheat glue. And now I'm 
gonna apply the glue all the way here and glue my cheesecloth to protect the papers underneath I'm gonna slide that piece of paper and I'm gonna apply the glue on all this end paper <coughs> Gonna take it off, <clears throat> place my book block to that cover. I'm gonna hold this paper down and fold the book cover. And I forgot to slide that clear piece of paper, so I'm gonna slide it there now. <clears throat> this is that non-sticky sheet. I'm gonna prepare one more. This one is dirty, so I'm gonna take another one for opposite side. Now I can flip it over. And do exactly the same. Now it just needs some heavy weight and let it dry. And here is our final book. Made with classical book binding from envelopes, some papers and newspapers. <laughs> I really love that cover, I have to say. The newspapers looks awesome on the cover. And I need a little go. I do have here the long bookmark. So, one more thing. <clears throat> I can cut the bookmark. It's quite long, so I can cut it, I think, about that long. Just to let it peeking out from book. So just very light with the fire. And we do have bookmark, we do have writing paper, so we do have also puzzles. And it can be fully open. And I'm gonna put back all that weight to make it even more flat because it's still, you know, I do have there those tea dyed papers and tea dyed envelopes, so it's still kind of fluffy. But I really like how it looks like. It's beautiful, it's nicely binded, and it's holding so many pages. And you can write on these envelopes, so why not to write on blue paper, you know? It's still paper, so there is plenty of space for writing. And making some memories. That's all my sharing for today. I hope you found some uh, new information, maybe. I hope uh, it gave you some idea how you can create uh, simple pages, book binding, easy way with this, uh, with this classical notebook style. Thank you so much for jumping in today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself and I will see you soon. Bye.